So you've tested with my heritage DNA or maybe transferred your results to my heritage from another company. Awesome. However, are you reviewing your match list and thinking it makes no sense or have you made a mess of things? My heritage has some amazingly powerful DNA tools, chromosome browser, auto clusters, and theories of family relativity. But most people never look past the ethnicity results, and even the ones who do, they're making critical mistakes that lead to junk matches, false trees, and wasted time chasing the wrong ancestor. Today, we're diving into the biggest DNA mistakes I observe people make on my heritage and exactly how to avoid them. If you've tested, transferred, or are even thinking about it, this video could save you hours of frustration and a whole lot of confusion. If you're ready to kick things off with the number one hidden danger most people don't even know they're falling for, click the like button on your way in. And here it is. Blind trust in DNA matches. My heritage gives you a list of genetic cousins and it feels like you've just been handed a map to your ancestors. But here's the problem. Some of those maps are just splotches. They, they, they don't help you get to where you're trying to go. Why? Because my heritage uses imputation. Yeah, a techie word that basically means we filled in the blanks between your actual DNA. It helps standardize results across different testing companies, but it also has false matches sneak in. Some studies show up to a third of small matches could be garbage. If your memory just thought about a 12 Cinemorgan match you just pieced together and thought, but wait, she has grandma's eyes. Slow down a little bit. Segments under 15 centimorgans are way more likely to be false positive. That means they're not a cousin. They're a coincidence. Could they have grandma's eyes? Sure. But are, from, are they from a location where lots of people have grandma's eyes, but they're not really closely related? Yeah, it's possible. Here's how to fix it. Prioritize matches that share larger segments, think 20 second to Morgans or more, but focus on figuring out how all of your matches with larger than 20 second to Morgans or more are related so that you can filter out the smaller matches who are indeed your relatives from the ones who aren't. Now, honesty check. Raise your hand if you've ever gone down a rabbit hole chasing someone who turned out to be your match by cosmic accident because they were less than 10 centimorgans. Yeah, I, I, I've done it once or twice. So let's normalize ignoring the small matches until we have validated how everyone else is related. Now, for those of you who have matches that are just, you don't really have larger matches, you're just going to have to wait. I'm sorry. Genealogy and genetic genealogy is not universal across the world. And so you might have to wait until more people who are your relatives are finally allowed in some cases or choose in others to take a DNA test. This one is a game changer and it's hiding in plain sight. Not testing or uploading DNA from your known relatives. If you have a parent, aunt, uncle, grandparent, cousin willing to take a DNA test and you haven't made that happen, you're leaving data out there on the table that could help you put together the pieces of your puzzle. Why? Because every generation closer to the common ancestor makes the DNA picture clearer. A match that has 75 centimorgans shared with you, but 180 centimorgans shared with your mom, suddenly the relationship to the cousin mystery can solve itself. Plus, relatives can help confirm false positives. If a segment doesn't show up in them, particularly if they're a parent, you know it's fluff. If they are willing to test and y'all haven't tested yet, get tested. If they have tested on other platforms, MyHeritage accepts 
uploads of DNA tests so you don't have to test people again. So transfer the DNA for the relatives you have. By uploading DNA tests or taking DNA tests with my heritage, even just one more relative that you know how they're related to you sharpens your understanding of your match list, boosts your auto cluster configurations, and makes those theories of family relativity way more accurate. So if you have ever been grateful for a relative whose DNA is now on man's, my heritage along with yours, raise your hand and then go click the like button. My heritage has auto clusters and theories of family relativity, and they are like flashy power tools. But here's the catch. If you power them up without knowing how they work, you're just as likely to drill into drywall as you are into building the framework to find your ancestor. So let's start with auto clusters. These don't include your closest matches. My heritage caps them at about 350 cent Morgan, which leaves your, out your siblings, parents, and even your first cousins, and that's okay. That means you should solve those higher matches first. How are they related to you? Especially since they provide the cleanest and most accurate clues. What auto clusters do well is show how you're more distant matches group together, often revealing hopefully shared surnames, shared ancestral homeland, and potentially ancestral lines. But here's the warning label nobody reads. If you have endogamy or pedigree collapse in your tree, yeah, I'm talking about you Acadians, Ashkenazi Jews, or perhaps some even Appalachian researchers. These clusters can be a tangled mess. So take them seriously, but don't take them literally. Use them to spot patterns, then verify with paper and logic. So if you've ever opened an auto cluster and thought, why is everyone related to everyone else? Yeah, you might have endogamy waving at you. Now for theories of family relativity. Unlike ancestry through lines, these don't just connect you through user trees. They may pull from actual historical records to bridge the gaps. But remember, the theory is only as good as the data that is inputted. If a source tree has grandma marrying her brother and a census record for a different state, you're in fantasy land. But here's the fix. First, build out your biological tree on my heritage with quality sourcing. The better your tree, the better the algorithm performs. Second, always validate and evaluate any theory against original documents, not just somebody's tree. And three, use auto clusters to support conclusions you've already started to suspect, not invent ones you want to be true. Now, if you've made it this far and you're nodding along to these mistakes and you're going to commit to avoiding them, tap the like button and share this video so that others can know that this is helpful information. This here is the tool that separates my heritage from ancestry. And yet, most people ignore it or don't even know why they need to use it. If you're only using ethnicity results and match list, you're skipping the actual genetic proof that confirms or crushes how you're related to the people in your family tree. The chromosome browser shows you exactly where you match someone down to the segment. And here's why that matters. And here's why that matters. Just because you and your match share 45 centimorgans doesn't mean that 45 centimorgan information is useful. But when you find a long clean segment on a single chromosome, that is especially helpful. When multiple people from this same branch all match you in the exact same spot, that's triangulation. 
That's real evidence and you can say, I can confirm that these three or more people are related. An ancestor doesn't offer this. Not even a peak. My heritage does. And that means if you're serious about using DNA for genealogy, this browser isn't optional. It's essential. So what's the fix? Use the dang thing. You found the chromosome browser. Congratulations. If you're just eyeballing colorful ballers and nodding sagely, we need to talk. Here's the problem. People use the browser like a shiny toy instead of a verification tool. They find shared DNA sections with what looks like a match and think, cool, we must be cousins, without checking whether other matches overlap that same segment. That's how triangulation works. Just because there are bars that you can see stacked on top of each other doesn't mean it's triangulation. Somebody might have that segment of DNA from a different relative. And I know that's confusing. But you don't just need two people who match you. You need them to also match each other on the same segment. Otherwise, the shared DNA might come from two totally different ancestors. Or even worse, the endogamy, and it just makes everything more confusing. What you need to look for is my heritage highlights shared segments down to six centimorgan. You can start becoming giddy that you figured out how people are related if you will prior to, uh, prioritize people with the longer segments and then you see the box that my heritage puts around the clusters of segments. They can't just stack on top of each other. They need to be bound by that box. And then you have your genetic genealogy golden ticket. If that tool sounds like an amazing resource, please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss future episodes of tips and tricks on how to build out your genetic family tree. Tell me if this sounds familiar. You find a match, you poke around their tree, your excitement increases, and then a week later you completely forgot what you figured out because you didn't write it down. You didn't label the match with the color dots that my heritage now has. You didn't put it in a group. You didn't even write a note. And now you're looking at your DNA match again and repeating the process, trying to figure out the mystery you have solved. My heritage gives you tools to stay organized, labels, notes, and so much more. So please use them. Now, these are all mistakes related to matches themselves, but let's look at a related genetic tree building mistake that aren't directly related to DNA, but has an impact on your tree building success. Let's be honest, some of the trees on my heritage look like somebody let a toddler smash the keyboard after watching an episode of Finding Your Roots. Names are wrong, dates are off, and somehow a guy born in 1802 has a Facebook page. The mistake is trusting any tree that gets slapped onto a DNA match without checking the details. Just because my heritage shows you a smart match, a smart tree match, or a theory of family relativity, don't accept it as the gospel truth. Trees are user submitted. That means they're only as accurate as the cousin who uploaded them. And some cousins should probably stop doing genealogy research. <laughs> The fix is twofold. First, review their tree. Cross-check birthplaces, ages, and family groups against records. If the tree says someone lived in Norway their whole life, but they had a child born in Missouri, you might have a problem or a lot of explaining to do. Second, build out your tree on my heritage. Don't fall victim to copying and pasting a tree from Ancestry, moving it over, and never checking the sources. You want to build a source-based family tree. Now, you can build your tree on MyHeritage or import it from Ancestry and other locations, but the key is the tree should be based on documentation as much as possible and supplemented with genetic genealogy as you have solved those mysteries. 
Now, some cultures lack documentation and rely on oral history, and I acknowledge that you might have to have different genealogical standards, and that's okay. However, most of the genetic genealogy testing world, you should have at least one quality source for every name in your tree, and an ancestry member tree is not a quality source. The more accurate data you give to my heritage, the better the theories of family relativity and your DNA matching will become. But if your tree is blank, and I'm not talking about those who don't know anything about their family tree and they're working on it, I'm not talking to you, but everybody else, if your tree is blank or your cousin's tree is a train wreck, my heritage recommendations will be just as awful. The final mistake is believing that one genetic genealogy company will give you all the answers you need. I get it. You test at MyHeritage, your matches populate, and you start sleuthing. But if you're not cross-checking those matches on other platforms like Ancestry, Family Tree DNA, or GEDmatch, you're solving a jigsaw puzzle without all the pieces. So what's the mistake? Assuming a DNA match will only be on the platform you test, so it's up to you to figure out in advance which is the best testing company. Many serious genealogists have their DNA spread across multiple platforms, and since MyHeritage has a large international user base, some of your American matches may only appear on Ancestry. Meanwhile, your Eastern European ones might be hidden in Family Tree DNA. The fix is to upload your raw DNA to other sites. Another advantage that MyHeritage has over Ancestry is that it accepts uploads from other genetic genealogy companies. And you can download your DNA and upload it to Family Tree DNA, Living DNA, and GEDmatch. If you have completed this step, please type gold star in the comments so I know who the gold star students are. If you haven't, no worries. Go do that step and come back and let me know you've completed it. Now here's the next challenge. If your DNA match has also tested elsewhere, particularly if they've tested on Ancestry or 23andMe, invite, persuade them to transfer their DNA to MyHeritage. Even if they don't use MyHeritage, you can compare your results with the amazing MyHeritage tools, which means you'll receive better research that will benefit them in the long run. Plus, it costs them next to nothing or it's free if you're willing to pay for the transfer of their upload. So put your DNA test results everywhere, leveraging data uploads to reduce the cost. Then there you have it. The sneakiest family tree wrecking mistakes people make on my heritage, and more importantly, how to avoid them. If you've been doing any of these, <laughs> welcome to the club. You're not alone. Nobody starts as an expert, but the faster you stop trusting invalid matches, skipping segment data, or treating theories of relativity as the gospel truth, the faster you'll start building a tree that actually is accurate. And if you've made it this far, You are clearly serious about doing things right, so take a second to subscribe. I have more videos coming that will help you get the most out of your DNA test without losing your mind. Just because you and your match share 45 centimeters doesn't mean that 45 centimeters is you. Centimeters. 